Here we go. Hello and welcome to Bounty in the Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor in chief at Bounty in the Comics. And today I got a story about the Mandalorian actor John Leguizamo, who played the character Gore Koresh in the show's second season. Leguizamo recently claimed he lost half of his fans due to his embrace of identity politics and that he stayed out of the sun in order to stay light-skinned so he would get work in Hollywood. The actor's comments came in an interview with Nick Barilli of the Oscars Scene Program, where he also detailed that he wasn't getting the same opportunities as his white peers when he was a student at New York University. Leguizamo said, Here I am in NYU, an A student. I had fixed my accent a lot by this point, and all the white kids in my class were going to five auditions a day. I was going to one every five months, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm working as hard as they are, I got better grades. And then I realized, oh my god, I don't have the same opportunities as they have. And I realized that it wasn't an equal playing field. It just was never going to be, and it disillusions you. You're a young man, and you realize, oh my god, life is not fair. Just because of how I look, how I sound, my economic class that I come from, it's just not a fair playing field. No matter how talented you are, it doesn't matter. But I thought talent was the great equalizer. So the audition I would go to every five months was always for a drug dealer, a murderer, a killer, or somebody, your gardener, or somebody servicing your house. He went on to refer to Hollywood as Hollywoodent since he wasn't landing the roles that he wanted, so he decided to turn to performance art in off-Broadway plays. The actor would then take issue with the amount of Latinos in Hollywood. He stated, because look, right now, the census came out, the 2020 census, and said we're almost 20% of the population. And then a couple of years ago, we were only 3% of the faces in front of the camera, less than 1% of the stories, less than 1% of the crew, less than 1% of the executives. That's cultural apartheid. He didn't hold this criticism to Hollywood, saying, and the same thing goes for politics, less than 1% of elected officials, and forget about publication. Latin children are least seen in children's picture books. So right then there, your self-esteem as a child is already being challenged. As a parent who has a toddler, I highly doubt that not seeing someone that looks exactly like you is really challenging your self-esteem. Uh, the, the child <laughs> doesn't even know what self-esteem is. Uh, and I'm, if there's any problems with a child's self-esteem, it's probably coming from bad parenting than anything that they're reading in a children's picture book. That's just an absolutely absurd claim. And this idea that the general population of a specific group of people has to be represented in Hollywood is also absurd. I'm not going to go into the details here, but Thomas Sowell has done extensive research, research on that subject, and I suggest you look into what he has done and said on it. Getting back to Leguizamo and what he had to say, he said, so not only are we invisible, but when we are seen, it's a negative portrayal. He then went on to ask, how do you create a Latin star in America when the roles are one-dimensional and not worthy of awards? The ugly question is, why are Latin people not succeeding? That's the ugly question. Are we not smart enough? Not talented enough? Not good-looking enough? Not hard-working enough? No, none of those stereotypes and racist ideas because nobody tries harder with less access. I do want to point out that this is coming from a successful Latin star in Hollywood. I mean, this guy's been in a ton of roles. He was just in The Mandalorian. He played uh, he played an Italian plumber in the Super Mario Brothers films. I mean, he has, has he has a successful career as a as a comedian. So he can claim that they are oppressed, but he proves that they aren't. It's just absolutely ironic. You cannot you cannot miss the irony. He's literally doing this interview with the Oscars. Nevertheless, Leguizamo went on to offer an example to prove his argument. He says, A friend of mine, I won't say her name, years ago when I was doing Mambo Mouth, sent out her resume. Dark-skinned Latin woman sent out her resume with a, with a picture. One with a Latin name, her real name, and then one with a whiteified name. The whiteified got callbacks, the Latin one got nothing. And that just explains the whole situation then and there. I'm not really sure that does explain the whole situation. Clearly they saw a picture of her, so they were, <laughs> the, the, even if with the whiteified name she got callbacks, they were still willing to cast a dark-skinned Latin woman. So I don't really know what argument he's making. Is he just making the fact that they want a whiteified name over a Latin name? I also think that's a load of crap as well, given the fact that John Leguizamo, his name is Leguizamo, and he's extremely successful. It makes absolutely no sense to me. He proves everything that he's complaining about false just by being who he is and what he has done. 
Leguizamo did go on to claim that things have changed in Hollywood. He said, things have changed incrementally, unfortunately. 40 years I've been in this business, and I guess we went from 1% to maybe this year, I think we're going to be at 4 or 5% in front of the camera. I'm not sure what the numbers are behind. I mean, things are improving. I think COVID made us really look at ourselves in America. I think Black Lives Matter was a huge awakening for America, a reboot for America to look at themselves and see what's going on. I don't disagree with him there. It definitely was a wake up call for America to really see what the Black Lives Matter movement was and just how horrible and evil it is. And I think a lot of people have seen that since 2020 when the Black Lives Matter movement really blew up. I know it's been around for a, a number of years before that. Well, Guizamo went on to say, I think everybody's trying to do the right thing and hire many more people of color. What I want to see, I want to see 20% of the roles in front of the camera of the crew of the stories of the executives. We're 25% of the US box office and we have 3% of the faces. I'm not asking for extra. I just want what's due us. Again, I think you should read some Thomas Sowell to really dig into this type of affirmative action that Leguizamo is calling for. Leguizamo went on to lament that he's not getting scripts greenlit in Hollywood despite having um, winning numerous awards uh, off Hollywood in theater and whatnot. He says, but it just takes somebody who looks like me being an executive and say that story, wor that story is worth it. Because I've been pitching stories for 30 years, always thinking that my writing was falling short because they never got greenlit. So I was like, damn, I thought it was a good script, but then I'm winning awards on Broadway and off Broadway, Obie Awards and Drama Desk Awards for my writing and a Tony, Tony nominations and even Emmys, but never getting my stories done. He continued saying, and you know, there was always the excuses where Latin people don't want to see Latin people. I'm like, no, then who do I want to see for Christmas at my house? Some Norwegian family sitting there? I want to see Latin people is what I want to see. Or they would tell me like when Critical Thinking, I directed, they would tell me, Latin people don't want to see feel-good movies. No, no, we want to see really depressing suicidal flicks. It's Hollywood wisdom, you know? Uzama would go on to declare, there is an audience and a hunger, so I know that exists regardless of what a studio head or network says to me anymore. He then goes on to cite the stage play Hamilton. He says, I know Hamilton would have never got made at a studio or a network. They would have been, oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm sorry, but wait a minute. Burr's going to be black and Hamilton's going to be Puerto Rican. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to laugh, but I can assure you they didn't speak in hip hop back in the 1700s, the founding fathers. It would it would have never gotten made. Never. It probably shouldn't have gotten made, honestly. I mean, we don't need to be race swapping historical figures. Uh, they're doing that over in the UK, which also proves Leguizamo's point here completely wrong. They, they race swapped Anne Boleyn. We're seeing it all over the place in major superhero films, such as the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the DC Extended Universe or whatever they're calling it. Now, uh, they're race swapping all of the characters in almost every single film. I mean, the new Batgirl is going to be played by Leslie Grace. So uh, I think he's absolutely wrong. The major Hollywood studios are doing race swapping all the time. So that's an absolutely ridiculous point that he's making an argument that he's trying to make because they are, they are doing it. The interview then transitions to a restaurant where Leguizamo is asked about how he navigates being told no so often. He responded, it's interesting because the rule is you become a celebrity, you get a set amount of success, you don't talk about your problems, you don't talk about the difficulties, you act like, oh, it was a magic carpet ride, you know? I feel like it's really important to talk about all the problems and all the difficulties, especially if you're a person of color and especially if you're Latin X. There's a lot of the people struggling and we need to change things. He went on to say, and Spike Lee showed me, because he's one of the first who spoke out against hashtag Hollywood so white. Well, he was hashtag Oscars so white, but I wasn't sure. He then gestures to the Oscars film crew recording the conversation, indicating that he didn't want to offend them by using the actual hashtag of hashtag Oscars so white. Nevertheless, he continued saying, so he brought that out and I was like, yeah, I went right and started retweeting him like crazy. And then I had posted hashtag Oscars so white, but hashtag Hollywood it's even white, whiter, which in itself is quite racist. They're trying to attack people based on their skin color. It's absolutely sickening. So he's complaining about racism while being actual racist, but that's critical race theory in a nutshell, right? Leguizamo then claimed he stayed out of the sun in order to keep a light skin tone in order to get work in Hollywood. He said, you know, there's colorism within Latin culture that we have to fix, but there's colorism in Hollywood too. I mean, I benefited from being light skinned and I stayed out of the sun so I could work. I definitely would not go in the sun for years. I was so pasty. He went on to confirm it was a conscious thing saying, oh yeah, so I could work. 
And then he added, and all the Latinos that made it so far, a lot of them were all light-skinned, you know? What happened to all the Afro-Latinos and the majority of indigenous Latinos? They don't get a shot, you know? So there's a lot of things we got to deal with in Hollywood and we got to fix it and we got to speak out and we got to speak up. He then went on to admit that his embrace of identity politics lost him half of his fans. He said, well, being vocal has its cost. It has a cost. Like when I became very politically conscious and then politically on my social, I lost half my followers. And then I got a lot of hate tweets, go back to your country, go back to Mexico, which I'm not Mexican, but I'll gladly go back to Mexico because it's a great country. Still, like when I post political stuff on Facebook, they go, John, you used to be so entertaining, but now you're a bore. But you know, all this hate stuff, which I ignore, you know? He then elaborated on his point about why he is so political. He says, I feel like if you've achieved a certain amount of success, it's your duty to give back. You gotta give back. So again, he's already, he, if we go back to the beginning of the interview, he's talking about how he was so oppressed, but then he's, already, he's now saying he's achieved so much success despite being quote unquote oppressed. But he says, I feel like if you've achieved a certain amount of success, it's your duty to give back. You gotta give back. You can't be an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and pretend it's not happening, not existing. I'm just too socially conscious and I feel like I had to fight to get here and I've earned the scars and the wounds and I wanna talk about how I had to fight to get here. If anybody had done what I had done, they'd be so much further. I mean, I got a producer, I'm not gonna name his name, but he said, you know, too bad, John, you're Puerto Rican because you're so talented. Otherwise, you'd be so much further along. Again, he's trying to paint himself as the victim despite being uh, as successful as he is. He thinks that he deserves more success. As he, as he pointed out, he thinks that it's owed to him. He thinks that 20% uh, of all roles in Hollywood need to be Latin, that it's owed to them. And he's, he's using the same uh, thought process to believe that success is owed to him as well. Nothing is owed to you. Lehuizamo continued, and that wasn't an insult, it was an actual fact. At the time I didn't know how to take it, but now I know it's like, yeah, because you're Aladdin, you're only gonna get so far. You're only gonna get certain roles, you're only gonna get certain opportunities. He then added, tokenism is real, glass ceiling's real, colorblind casting was promised to me by all the artists in the 70s. We were gonna break that down. And then it wasn't until Hamilton, 2000, somewhat they, they did, that they finally did it and it succeeded. It showed that it does work. I don't think this guy has any clue about what he's talking about. He contradicts himself all the time. He's a actual living, walking contradiction. He talks about how oppressed he and Latin people are, yet he is a <laughs> successful Hollywood actor who's lecturing us uh, in an interview on the Oscars YouTube channel. Like how much more elitist can you get? Like get out of here. <clears throat> Those are my thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you think. My name is John Trent and you've been watching Bounding Into Comics.